So I'm just going to go over the our Docker desktop extension, which is actually or a Docker jump box, which means that once you install this in your Docker container network, you have access to all the services within that Docker container network. There's an added security level layer and convenience because you don't have to actually expose any of the services that are running within the Docker container network outside of the network since the jump box is inside the network. And what it does is it actually, once it's in there, it uses and connects to the Docker APIs to and the Docker events to kind of synchronize all the activity in Docker with within remote it so that you can eat it will update and easily see if your services are online or offline or if they've been created or taken down and just makes it really convenient and easy to connect to a and connect to and control access to your Docker network. So in the Docker desktop, you can see here, we've got a, we've got the remoted extension installed and you can find that in the marketplace. So the first thing you need to do is register the container so that it's, so we, we've done this. So then what we've got to do now is register the containers with your remoted account. And so you can just hit, get this, get registration code. Actually, I have to have that window active instead of the one off screen. And it will open that up. It'll generate the registration code and then return you here with it. So there's your code. And if you want to do get a registration code manually, you can go up here through the add device and, and find that stuff. Or you can also use a restore code if you if your device was deleted and you want to restore it. So we'll just register that. And we should see when it registers in here, this should update. Yep, there it goes. And you'll see it's already used the API to find what's running in my containers, in my Docker network, all the containers, and you can see them coming online here. So you can just as a just as proof, these are all the containers that are running. And you can see here they've got the container and the actual service. So it's found the services that are running on these different containers. So these are these are other are other are other Docker extensions that are a single a single container that just does a, a direct connection. So these are just some kind of sample ones. We've got a little echo server and a little visitor log server. So now I'll show you. So we just this will do the same thing as going in there and jumps to the device. So once we go to the device, now that it's in remote, it we can do we have control over who sees it and and who can connect. So actually, the first thing we will do, which is kind of fun, is this visitor log thing is it's just a simple web server that is kind of a demonstration of how we actually do have access to this service and we can make a public url for that you can see there's a little warning because it is actually exposing this to the public and if i have this public url here now i can actually share that with everyone i don't know if we can how that works in this webinar but i'll put it in the chat and then if we launch that or connect to it you'll see it's just a little visitor log and you can see so it tracks the different addresses of people that have connected to it just the refer addresses so that's kind of that's kind of cool there's a, so that's a, a very easy way if you need to share something that's you know directly some little web thing outside of your outside to the to the world let's see so then oops. so then like i was saying so if we want to control access to this thing so the way that we that things are set up in remote it is that you can have networks so we've got a few networks here set up in our playground account and they're tagged with different things. So these are this one's tagged with tech support. And then in our organization, we have here's our organization members. You'll see some of them here are tech support members. And in the roles, if we look at our tech support role, you can see it has specific access to two networks with the tech support tag. And these users can view and connect. So now if I go back to that device and I say, okay, well, this is a, something that I want tech support to have access to. I just do that. And now you'll see this is part of the tech support network. If you go here, it's in the tech support. Now these people basically have it. And that's how you can control who has access to what's in a real simple way. 
So yeah, so that's the visitor log showing the networks and the tags and the roles. So the next thing I wanted to show is, is how simply and how nice this is as it to update. So if I do something like I go into my containers and I install an Nginx system, I already have this in here. So if I run that, we should see in here, what is this? Competent hopper. So you can see that's also been discovered. And then as that starts up, these things should come online. And then now I can simply launch that. Oops, wrong one. Competent hopper, there we go. Launch that. And we should see an Nginx, an Nginx server. Hmm. I don't, whatever. I don't know. It looks like maybe the Nginx didn't install correctly. Well, that's not on our side, but <laughs> oops, sorry about that. So yeah, it's, it's exited for some reason. So you can see that. I'm not sure why that happened, but maybe I installed the wrong Nginx container. But if I do delete it because it was bad, it should disappear from here too. Let's see. Yep, there it goes. So that's the installing and removing of Nginx. And then the, the real powerful thing is, is because, you know, there are limited uses for the Docker desktop, you know, on your system in, in terms of real use and real production use, what you'd want to do is, is have this same extension out in a production environment or anywhere else in the world that you have Docker containers. So if you want to do that, you have this registration code here. It's got the same registration ID. So if you, if I copy that and I actually just install that via the command line, you'll see a, a new container will be generated, a Docker remote at Docker jump box. And, oh, and there it is. Oh, I forgot to rename it, but yeah. So so there's the another one directly just installed through the command line. You can see how quick and easy that is too. And now you can see that one's also starting up and all the all the things are coming online. And we can just test it with this echo server and see what happens. And there it is. So that's echoing. So yeah, so that's that's the new thing. And, and then you can see that you actually don't need the Docker desktop at all when interacting with this to kind of monitor your servers and things. So like if I just go here and showing in desktop that I can do a, you know, just run Docker commands directly. So if I do like a Docker stop echo server, whoops. We should see our echo server stop. What's happening? It exited. It's exiting, but not, it's crashing, but not shutting down. So that's why it's not. Sorry. Oh, there it goes. Okay. So it took a little bit longer because it crashed instead of shut down cleanly. But, and then if I do a Docker remote. Echo server, we should see that disappear also. So you, so we don't, so you don't actually need to do the, the using the, the desktop at all. I'll take a little bit, but I wonder if it's, there it goes. So anyway, that's kind of what I wanted to show.